So I'm a retina specialist and ocular oncologist. So every day when I see patients in the clinic, I look through a dilated pupil into the eye, and I look into the back of the eye. And this is an example of what it looks like when I see in the back of the eye in a normal eye. And also, you can see that there's an optic nerve is labeled. That's the white part. But I also see this in my clinic. This is called an ocular melanoma. This is a, a cancer, and it has some similarities to the cancer that starts on the skin called skin melanoma. But this actually starts inside the eye, so it's really kind of hidden from view. When I see this picture, I know that the patient's life could be in danger, so I have three goals at this stage. My first goal is to try to save the patient's life. My second goal is to try to save the patient's eye. And the third goal is to try to save some vision. Getting a diagnosis like ocular cancer and ocular melanoma is very shocking for patients. They've never heard of such a thing, and so I really try to help explain what this is and what kind of treatment options they have. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about one of my patients. Um, let's call him Joe. He's a young guy who's never been sick, 33 years old, um, and he was referred to me with a large ocular melanoma. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how we were able to treat Joe at the James, how he would have been treated in the past, and what we're doing to try to make treatments better for ocular melanoma. This is a picture looking through the pupil at a large ocular melanoma, what that can look like. And unfortunately, this cancer, untreated, can cause blindness. But most importantly, it can cause death. It causes death by spreading from the eye to other parts of the body, especially the liver. So this is our major uh, problem that we have focused on, is trying to prevent death from ocular melanoma. This is a picture of an MRI scan. and so. This patient has ocular melanoma in one eye. The eyeballs are the white circles, and you can see the dark melanoma. It's, this is a large melanoma in the eye um, that's labeled by the arrow. So you can see from this picture that the melanoma is actually quite hidden by the eye. The only way we can see that is through a dilated pupil, a dilated eye exam. And so hopefully if we see patients regularly, we can catch this at an early stage and prevent this from happening. But unfortunately, sometimes um, you know, people don't have any symptoms until this gets very large. And so this is what happened to Joe. We were not able to catch his tumor early because he did not get the eye exam. And now we have a large melanoma. So what, what can we do at this stage? Well, if the, if the tumor is smaller, I can treat it with a radiation patch to try to save the eye. But unfortunately, in Joe's case, his tumor was too large and I had to do an eye removal surgery. He did really well with that surgery, okay? But the problem is, when you have an, a large eye melanoma, there's a high chance that it's going to spread to the body and be deadly. So we have to monitor for this. So how do we used to monitor for this? What we used to do is a blood test called liver function test. Now, um, this was done you know, in the 90s. It was done, it's even done by some centers today. And this is a great idea because the eye melanoma will spread to the liver and the liver function test will be abnormal at some point. But usually by the time that that happens, it's too late to be able to do anything about the cancer that's spread. So I'm gonna tell you about four improvements in ocular melanoma care that are now standard at the James. So our first improvement is genetic tumor testing. So we were able to do genetic tumor testing on a piece of Joe's ocular melanoma. And there are different types of genetic tumor testing, but he had one that looked at chromosomes in the tumor. And so I've circled the chromosome number three. So you can see, instead of having the normal two copies of chromosome three, he only has one copy of chromosome three in the tumor. That is something that's very important in ocular melanoma. Unfortunately, that means that it's very, very likely to spread to the liver. So armed with this information, we know that we have to watch Joe very carefully for the spread of ocular melanoma. So we don't just follow people with blood tests at Ohio State. We do imaging. And we try to find, uh, use the most sensitive tests so we can try to detect the spread of ocular melanoma as early as possible so we have more options for the patient. So we typically try to follow patients with MRI scans of the liver because that's the most sensitive way to follow patients. Um, so unfortunately, in Joe's case, he did develop spread of the cancer to the liver, but luckily, because of the imaging, we were able to detect it at an earlier stage so we can do something about it. So the third thing that we have at the James is very exciting. 
we actually have a clinical trial specifically for people like Joe, whose cancer has spread from their eye to the liver. This is called the DELCATH clinical trial. We're lucky to have Jay Harrison Howard, who opened the trial for us, who's a surgical oncologist. This uses a really interesting technology to deliver a high dose of chemotherapy directly to the liver, right where the tumor is. And it also is able to prevent that chemotherapy from going to the rest of the body. So it's able to minimize the side effects from this treatment. So Joe actually told me about what it was like to get this treatment, um, about his first treatment. So he said, you know, he, he went from being in the intensive care unit that first day to actually going home the next day. So he, he said, well, it wasn't too bad. So I was, I was pretty impressed with that. Um, so he actually was able to continue working while he was getting these treatments. He had a total of five treatments, and his liver disease was controlled for a whole year, which was fantastic. But we continued to do imaging for him, and unfortunately what happened was we found a new ocular melanoma cancer, but this time it was outside the liver. It was in the lung. So now the Stelcath trial is not going to be effective for, for this but luckily we have a fourth option, which is standard at the James for ocular melanoma, and that's called immunotherapy. So you might have heard of immunotherapy. That's an exciting new therapy. Um, our ocular melanoma medical oncology specialist, Dr. Olenke, was able to start him on a drug called ipilimumab. So ipilimumab, what it does is it kind of removes the breaks from the immune system so they can really attack the cancer aggressively and control it. So Joe is currently getting immunotherapy and doing well, and we hope he does very well with this treatment. So without these four improvements, you know, what would have happened in the past is by the time Joe's metastasis was found, you know, there would not have been anything we could do for him, and really survival at that stage is just a couple months. So we are very happy to have made these improvements at Ohio State. But really, we have a lot of work to do. So really, what we are working towards is preventing ocular melanoma spread. So I'm excited about this clinical trial. This is something that we can offer to patients like Joe who come in today. So this is for the people who, like Joe's tumor, have genetically high risk of spreading. It's a large tumor. But on their scan, they show no, no disease in the liver. Okay. So before they get metastasis or before they spread to the liver, we're going to be able to give them a drug that looks very effective, we hope, in ocular melanoma called crizotinib. So we have this trial open for our patients now, and we hope this is, proves to be a very promising treatment. So I told you we um, did genetic testing in ocular melanoma tumor tissue, and our ocular melanoma team at the Havener Eye Institute at Ohio State is very interested in ocular melanoma genetics research. Um, and so with my colleagues, Dr. David Orff, Dr. Abdel Rahman, and Robert Polarski, who's a genetic counselor at the James, we've been working to try to understand the genes of ocular melanoma. But we have not just focused on the tumor tissue genes, the mutations in the tumor tissue. We really care about, you know, what are mutations that happen just in the normal cells of the body that can lead people to get ocular melanoma in the first place, as well as other cancers. Because we really want to try to detect disease early and prevent it. So by doing these, the, these gene screens on the normal tissues, we were able to find a gene mutation that's very important called BAP1. And when that's mutated in the normal tissues, that causes a high risk of cancers. It's called an inher inherited cancer syndrome. And this one's really important for causing ocular melanoma. But not only does it cause ocular melanoma, it causes other cancers. So people also get skin melanoma. They get a type of lung cancer called mesothelioma that you might have also heard of caused by asbestos. And they can get kidney cancer. And there are actually a lot of other cancers that can, can result from this. And I just want to mention a patient was really important to helping, helping our team discover this. So we actually received a letter from a patient and this patient said, boy, I have so much cancer in my family. And this is a picture of the genetic map from this, this patient's family. Okay, and the squares represent men in the family. Circles represent women in the family. And those black different shapes inside, that represents different cancers that the different family members have gotten. And unfortunately, many of these family members have passed away from cancer. So you can understand why the patient was very concerned about this. And when she wrote to us, she said, 
you know, I think there could be a chance that there's something genetic causing this cancer in my family. And I've talked to other physicians and they're just not sure about, you know, whether there could be a genetic cause. We, they don't know of any gene that could cause this type of syndrome. Luckily, our team at the James and at the Havener Eye Institute was able to identify that BAP1 was the cause of this family's cancer. So we can actually find out who's at high risk for cancer, screen them, try to get them preventive care, and then who is not at high risk for cancer. So how are we using these discoveries? Well, we are very interested in trying to develop targeted therapy for BAP1 mutated cancers. We think that will be a great next step. Secondly, we have been very, working very hard to try to develop screening guidelines for patients with BAP1 to try to prevent cancer and reduce cancer risk. So one thing about the BAP1 syndrome is that patients can get ocular melanoma very early as teenagers. Usually it presents much later. So we want to really start getting people with BAP1 syndrome screened for ocular melanoma by getting a dilated eye examination. And we want to start that by age 11 if we can. So in the lower right corner of the, of the screen here, you can see a picture, again, looking through the pupil. And the arrow points to something called a nevus. So that's a medical word for a freckle. And this freckle is inside the eye. So this is benign, but this is what can turn into ocular melanoma. So especially people with a BAP1 syndrome, we want to catch this at this stage, at the benign stage, so we can zap this, we can treat it at the first sign of cancer, and we can prevent death from ocular melanoma by doing that. Ohio State has really been at the forefront of screening for inherited cancer risk. So the great example of this is Lynch syndrome. That's an inherited colon cancer syndrome. And Ohio State has been screening patients across the whole state of Ohio and has been able to reduce cancer deaths and colon cancer cases by doing this. And we really hope that we could follow a similar model for patients with this BAP1 syndrome. And this is a picture of our ocular cancer Peloton. So you might have heard of, there's an event called Pelotonia or Pelotonia. At, uh, it's a very interesting grassroots fundraiser that's big. It, it supports cancer research, particularly at the James. And so our, our team here is uh, pictured. And I am very honored to have one of my ocular melanoma patients as a member of our team. And for his case, we were able to find his tumor early. We were able to treat it early. So we were able to save a life save an eye, save some vision, and he is doing very well. So Pelotonia, it's one goal to a cancer-free world. And our, we hope that our work in ocular melanoma and genetics will move us just one step closer to that goal. Thank you.